All right, uh, we're going to be talking about the spectrum analyzer today, and we're going to be using it in a strange way. So if you have one of these cyclant um, spectrum analyzers, and maybe you have a, a, a different model that has the same feature, um, this particular siglent is an SSA 3021X. Um, it's been hacked up to 3.2 gigahertz, but um, it is um, just kind of their standard standard spectrum analyzer. Um, and uh, they sell models that have VNA functions and stuff in them. I don't have one of those. But this particular model, you could buy a return loss bridge that went uh, on the front of the instrument. And that particular uh, bridge coupler um, was going to cost you about $500 or $600, so qu quite expensive. And I'm going to show you uh, a way to, to do the same thing on, on, the, on the cheap. So um, the magic here is that you have this button called Mode. And if you press Mode, it gives you a couple choices, Spectrum Analyzer or Reflection. And so we're going to choose Reflection. Now Reflection changes the screen, and uh, we have Return Loss on the... Um, y-axis, but the marker has units of VSWR. So our marker right now, with everything just kind of floating around in the breeze, is measuring 1.01. 0, uh, 1 .01. So anyway, um, you're not going to be able to use this thing without that three, uh, five or six hundred dollar uh, bridge. Uh, but <clears throat> I did a video on these. I'll link it down below where you can get these really cheap, but they're, they're broken when you buy them. They don't, they don't work right when you buy them. You have to put in some jumpers and stuff. And uh, I'll put a link down below on how you, how you get one of these to work. Um, it, they're just built wrong. So uh, once you modify your uh, bridge, uh, and these are like, I don't know, 10, 20 bucks, they're really cheap. Um, we're going to use this, okay? So the way we're going to connect it is, let's see here. <clears throat> All right, so we have the tracking generator and the input to the spectrum analyzer. Okay, so we want to take the uh, tracking tracking generator. Okay, so this is this is the check tracking generator, and we want to put that on the input. Okay. All right, so we'll put that on the input, and then the uh, other part of the spectrum analyzer, the input. We want to put that here on what's called out. Okay, so uh, let's make sure I get this all connected here. All right. <clears throat> so the way that a bridge works is uh, it has an input and an output. So that you can think of this as a, a triangle, right? Uh, if if uh, things go from here to here, they go through this. Half of it goes this away, and half of it goes this away. And then when these two things are in balance, that's the that's the bridge type of thing. It's this dot here. We're going to be using this as uh, where we attach things we want to measure. So it, once again, you put your tracking generator on the input, and the uh, input to your spectrum analyzer here on the output. Okay. And uh, what we're going to do is just so it's easy to uh, easy to film here. Um, I am going to put it in a vise, okay? And so um, it just holds it. it. It just holds it. The PC board is ground everywhere, so this just adds kind of like more ground. Um, and whenever you use uh, things like this, they're going to be very susceptible to how they're grounded, how they're mounted, what's around them. You get reflections, you get noise, you get all kinds of stuff. So you, you need to be careful in this measurement, but I want to give you the rough idea on how to use a bridge in, in this particular mode now, okay? So, uh, so now that we have the bridge connected, we're going to go back here and we're going to have to do a couple things. One is that we're going to need to uh, calibrate so um, the way that you calibrate the uh, return loss bridge or your, v your, your VSWR meter is you hit measurement setup. Measurement setup now says ca uh, we're in reflection mode. It says calibration, okay? So we're gonna say calibration reference position we can set to 90, 
um, and that will put it up here at the top. We're going to do a calibration. You can do, uh, we can reset your calibration. You can do it just an open or you can do an open short. So we're going to do open short. This is just like a VNA, right? So we're going to do an open short. It's going to tell us connect the open. Okay. And so <clears throat> down here, I'm going to take uh, an open and I'm going to connect it uh, here on our dot. Okay. And the VNA says press enter. And then it says put a short in. Okay. So we're going to find the short. And I just noticed I wanted to do something different, but you, you would put in the short and you'd say enter. And then uh, you would say enter again and then everything is done and you have a you have a good a good calibration. OK, so uh, but what we're going to do instead is I want to change the frequency range. Uh, we're going to start. We want to stop at say 600 megahertz. I'm going to be testing VHF and UHF stuff. So we're going to set it so it's between uh, one megahertz and 600 megahertz uh, megahertz on the screen, and then we'll go through the calibration again and be better. So we'll do this. We'll do the uh, open. Um, this is my open. And then I hit enter. Oops, what am I doing here? I have to push that first. Okay, I put my open on, I hit uh, enter. It says put the short on. Put our short. Enter. And then uh, hit enter to apply these. And then we get a nice straight line across because there's nothing on there. If we put a load, I'm going to put a 50 on load uh, on here and we should get a nice line at in ma negative infinity if everything were perfect. So let's go here to amplitude. Let's set the scale to five dB. Oops. Uh, reference level, I'm sorry, reference level zero. I hit the wrong thing here. Scale, we'll do 5 dB, 5 dB. Okay, so you can see that if I take the load off, uh, we have a nice straight line. And then if I put the uh, load on, we're measuring a VSWR of 1.8 where the marker is. Oops, now I'm messing it all up. Scale per division, five, okay. Hit marker. There we go. Uh, so if I can move the marker around 1.07. Yeah, so thing is in calibration. Okay, so now I'm going to take this off and I'm going to put a, um, I'm going to put an unknown. Okay. Uh, so here is an unknown. It's a little stubby antenna. I'll slot on the uh, stubby antenna here. And if we look up, we're getting a dip where the antenna is resonant. And if I do a um, peak and I'm going to do search configuration, I want to look at negative peaks. Uh, minimum. Here we go. So now the peak type is minimum. So the next time I hit peak, it will find that bottom part there. OK, so peak and we're getting a VSWR. So you can see that if I'm near it or farther away from it, it's going to change. So I'm going to try to get away from it. Peak. There we go. We're getting a VSWR of 1.18. So it's pretty resonant right there. So that's pretty fun. So now we have an, a SWR bridge. Uh, let's take that off. Uh, let's see. Here is, uh, here is a Redivus dual band antenna. Let's slot that on there. And uh, it's right in the way of filming. We'll move it over here. There we go. So we're getting a nice double dip uh, at the VHF and UHF. You peak again and we're getting a dip at 425 megahertz of VSWR of 1.34. Anyway, you get the idea, right? Um, 
we'll do just one more antenna. Uh, this is a, uh, I'll do two more antennas. This is a fake diamond antenna. Uh, let's see, oh, we'll do the real one first. Now, don't. we'll just do a real one. The video's gonna be too long. So this is a real uh, Nagoya uh, 77 dual band antenna. Get him out of the way here. And uh, you see that he is doing really well. Look at the, look at the, uh, that's at 160 megahertz. Now, if I grab the vise, it's gonna shift the wavelength shorter. And if I uh, move it around, you can see that uh, depending on what it's around and how I'm holding it and stuff, these are difficult measurements to make. So now I'm at 150. Um, again, you're going to have to figure out your, your, your setup and how, how to measure your antennas and stuff. But there you go. Um, you can use your nice um, spectrum analyzer on the cheap with one of these, uh, with one of these uh, bridges. You can also do it with a, a coupler. Um, I did a video once on the difference between uh, doing return loss measurements with a coupler versus a bridge. Bridge seems to be a little bit better, but not by much if you have a good coupler. Um, and I believe if you have an expensive bridge, then it's a little bit better. What do you get? Well, this thing zeroes out at maybe a minus 35 return loss. And uh, maybe you get minus 50 or something with a really, really good setup. But you don't really care about that because your antennas are never that good. So these little cheap ones are, are going to be plenty good for a garage use.